blood-soaked. The world is blood-soaked. Africa, South America, Central America. North America, the blood is fading because they were exterminated. But the world is blood-soaked. And the Middle East, I don't think there's too much there that's, unu that's unique. The use of, the use of a racist uh, ethnic cleansing project, <coughs> Australia, Tasmania, the use of um, brutal repression, which cannot be sustained, that happened across the whole of Africa. So, if we stand back, we'll see that there's, there's local specificities, but Britain supports, has always supported, bloody, bloody, bloody regimes in order to secure local control. I, I think that can be supported by the evidence. And Britain set up this, the Zionist project, supported this, uh, the Zionist project, sorry, in 1917. They, they stated the reasons. One was to get, in the words of the first, the first British Governor General of Jerusalem was Ronald Storrs. Uh, and he said, he supported the Balfour Declaration, he said, because he who gives is blessed as well as he who receives. By supporting uh, Zionism, uh, we will get a loyal little Jewish Ulster in a sea of hostile Arabism. The model was Ulster. The model was send in planters, dispossess the natives, the Irish at that time, and set up a loyalist group who the local people hate. Why do they hate them? Because they've been killing them and robbing them. And this loyalist group must rely upon the imperial power. So Britain supported the Zionist project very much on the Ulster model. Britain also supported Zionism very clearly to take the Jews away from the revolutionaries. If you looked at, at Europe at, at, up until 1917, you'll probably remember a small thing called the Russian Revolution that shook the planet. Uh, Jews, were very, you might have heard of somebody called Trotsky or a guy called Zinoviev. You might have looked at his antecedent, a fellow called Karl Marx, and a few others of that ilk. Jews in Eastern Europe moved towards the progressive movements and the socialist movements and very often the revolutionary movements. And Herzl, the founder of Zionism, promised that he would take the Jews away from these movements and make them into colonists who would go and pillage another country. That was a not insignificant offer which elites were prone to take up. Now, it's not, that's not ancient history, but it, I think there were very profound strategic reasons why Britain supported Zionism. It certainly wasn't the love of Jews. Balfour was a vicious anti-Semite. Churchill was a very nasty anti-Semite indeed. Both of them very, very uh, staunch Zionists. And, and, and the record shows there are more of that. Up till the present day, I would say only this. There's a debate. And I'm sure Yvonne and I will have a debate going back in the car. Because I don't think the Jewish lobby is decisive. I think it's significant but it doesn't decisively commit an empire to act in a, in a particular way. And Mia Simon and Walt, who argue this, say that Israel is forcing America to act against its own best interests. I, I don't accept that. I think that, I don't think, I report the American Secretary of State who said that Middle Eastern oil is the greatest prize in world history. He who controls this oil actually controls Japan controls China to a great degree, controls Europe to an enormous degree. So he who controls access to Middle Eastern oil, we've got Iraq now, he who controls access to this oil allows other people access to that oil on their terms. They have to accept the Pax Americana. So I think to control that enormous asset is the game. The great game in the past was over Afghanistan, but the great game today is to control access to oil, specifically when it's beginning to run down a bit. So I would argue that the Jewish lobby is very, very powerful. The Zionist lobby is very powerful. The pro-Israel lobby is very powerful in mobilizing support for what elites want. But when elites don't want it, then they kind of disappear and there's a bit of a damp squib. So I hope that answers it. But this debate will continue, and maybe the different positions could even be synthesized. But um, I, 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 I think it's the I word.